What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So we talked about it very briefly yesterday with a Nintendo Direct date that could be coming up. Well, now it looks like it's just getting out there online with people corroborating it all over the place. So we'll go over exactly when you can expect that big Nintendo Direct to take place. Also, we are gonna be talking about the PlayStation Plus premium service as it has launched in North America, that being the PS1 and the PS2 games and all of this. I had a chance to check it out, but we did get some good news when it comes to how the games will be running. And we also had that Capcom showcase last night. We'll go over everything that was announced there. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. It helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you are subscribed down below. And we're going to start today with the, the Persona games that were announced for Xbox with Game Pass, that being Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royal. When they made that announcement, it was a little strange because, well, Persona 4 Golden isn't on a PlayStation console, so you figure it would have gone there alongside of it. Well, in a press release that got out there a bit after the Xbox announcement took place, it does appear that these games will also be going to PC through Steam and PlayStation 5. Strangely enough, not PlayStation 4. I mean, it's at, it's Atlas. Atlas does some weird stuff, don't they? I think we all understand that at this time. Now, it could also go to the Switch, and maybe Nintendo wants to announce that on their terms in a Nintendo Direct that is coming up here. Like I said, pretty soon we'll talk about that here in a minute. But it, it, it's just, it's strange. It's Atlas. What do you expect? But at least it does look like uh, these different Persona games that are not on the PlayStation 5 currently will make their way there at some point. Also, after that Xbox showcase, people were really excited with what they saw from Diablo 4. And I'll admit, there was some really good looking stuff there in that gameplay. And some of the things they described, like the open world and the 150 some odd dungeons to go through with friends, it's exciting stuff. Well, there were, of course, questions after Diablo Immortal happened as to how they're going to monetize it further. Well, we can see this post up from Adam Fletcher saying Diablo 4 is coming out as a full price game built strictly for PC and console audiences. The game is huge and there will be tons of content after launch for all players. Paid content is built around optional cosmetic items and eventually full expansions, so typical DLC or big releases after the fact there for large content. Um, we'll be sharing more info soon. And I mean, this is just something they have to do now in a post Diablo Immortal world where you see headlines that a hundred and thousand dollars or so can be spent attempting to max out a, a character. Well, at least with Diablo 4, that's the game that I'd say most console and PC players are actually looking towards and really excited for. I know Diablo Immortal, another Diablo game, but heavily leans into the idea of the gotcha mobile monetization practices and well, we've seen how far they've gone with that. So good to hear that Diablo 4 cosmetic items, I guess, for monetization, then obviously large expansions after its release. Oh, and we did have another event that was announced for today, actually. We can see this posted up over on Twitter from Assassin's Creed. Join us uh, tomorrow, that being today, as we celebrate Assassin's Creed. Tune in on the Ubisoft YouTube Twitch channel, that being uh, 9 a.m. Pacific or noon Eastern. They did mention they're gonna celebrate the past and the future or things to come for Assassin's Creed. Currently, there are two games that are rumored, that being the Assassin's Creed in Infinity project. Sounds like that's much further out, whereas another game that's rumored is Assassin's Creed Rift. At least these are just the names that are being put out there in these different reports. And that seems to be something they're setting up for 2022, and that will play off of a character and story from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So. Big stuff here for Assassin's Creed fans. Make sure you check out this presentation here a couple of hours after this video goes up. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the PlayStation Plus premium tier that is currently live in North America. It actually went live yesterday and I had a chance to take a look through it. I made a video on the second channel of Spawn Wave Plus, just casually going through the different options and trying out some of those original PlayStation games. And I have to say, they play pretty well. In fact, it looks like they are indeed 60 hertz. This was a concern that was brought up because in other regions, Sony was releasing the 50 hertz versions of the games, which if you have it on current displays now, like your nice flat screen at home, 
it's gonna look a little weird, it have weird frame, ti frame time issues, and Sony even did a patch trying to smooth this out and push it up to 60 hertz, but that it introduced ghosting and all kinds of artifacts and issues there. But we can see this over on VGC, saying the North American version of Sony's revamped PlayStation Plus service has gone live in the region, confirming several new games and NTSC versions of PS1 classics. VGC has confirmed that North American users will be getting the NTSC 60 hertz versions. They also have a list here if you want to look, take a look at some of the PS1 games. Most of them are titles that we were familiar with from the other launches. However, I did notice one highlight here that was a bit of a surprise is Resident Evil Director's Cut. Now, I also noticed it doesn't have trophies from what I saw. I don't know if they'll add that in down the line or anything, but having that kind of a surprise pop up was pretty cool. Resident Evil Director's Cut going in. And I checked out Ape Escape, which looks pretty good. There are a lot of filters you can try out and even throwing it into native resolution. Basically just dropped it into this very small square in the center of the screen. And then I realized, oh yeah, that technically is the resolution that the original PlayStation would have been putting out. And I also checked out Resident Evil and Wild Arms. Uh, Wild Arms, you have to, it's an absolute classic. Aside from the classic games, we have the Game Trials and the PS3 streaming games, which they're still streaming games, so they're gonna play with some noticeable input lag and, and all of this, but I guess, hey, it's an option there if you wanna go back and experience some of those classic titles there. But looking through the PlayStation Plus Extra tier, that being the tier that has access to all of the PS4 and PS5 games, it's a pretty substantial library for the price, especially if you just got a PS5 and you're looking to sign up for PS Plus. I think it's worth going for PlayStation Plus Extra because there are even several first party Sony games that are somewhat new, like Returnals in there, Demon Souls, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Man, PS4, even games like Ease 8 and Ease 9, games that we saw launch in Japan, did show up here in the North American PlayStation Plus Extras as well, even like Gravity Rush 2. So there are some pretty obscure things in there as well as some of the big titles from Sony. But overall, it's good to hear that those PlayStation original games are the 60 Hertz versions. We can put that concern to rest now and look towards some other titles that will be added down the road, maybe with trophy support and the better visuals that we have now with these versions of the game. I'm thinking like, Metal Gear Solid. That is the big one I would love to see added in here because it's really not that easy to access now. Obviously you can emulate it and, and all of this, but Konami has been kind of pulling their games down. We don't have access to digital Metal Gear Solid games any longer after they either removed them from the stores. And they also removed Metal Gear Solid 4 from PlayStation 3 streaming with PS Now. It has not returned for this service. So I'm hoping that is a big reveal with Metal Gear Solid going in as well as two and three. Also taking a look at the list of games going through it with the PlayStation Plus premium tier down to essential. I think extra is the way to go currently. And if Sony does continue to add in PlayStation 1, PS2, and PSP games and build out that classic side, then I think the premium service will be a bit easier to suggest to people, whereas now it just needs a bit more content, but certainly a good start for Sony so far. Next up, let's talk about this elusive Nintendo Direct. It's been the topic of conversation, mostly because it hasn't been announced yet and we're technically on the day where it would normally be if an E3 was going on, right? A couple of days after Xbox has had their showcase, we expect Nintendo to show up generally that Tuesday there's no direct. However, we talked yesterday about a, a, re a reported date that got out there from Alana Pierce in a live stream, and I wasn't necessarily expecting it to blow up online like it did yesterday because people just started corroborating it left and right, and I was like, well, okay, I guess that's out there now. And I guess the good news is that if I make it a, an emphasis like I have here in the video, I won't have people messaging me every single day on places like Twitter and even through email, where's the Nintendo Direct? We can go over the date right now. Take a look at this. This was uh, posted up over on Nintendo Life where they just kind of brought all the information together with Alana Pierce saying she's written down 
the 29th, June 29th for the Nintendo Direct. And then several other, like I said, sources, publications came out and said, for example, Direct Feed Games, Nate, who was being very mysterious, if you noticed, over on the Spawncast many times. Although I did ask him, hey, Nate, is there a Direct this week? He said, no. Well, there we have it. The window of airing is either June 28th or June 29th, may depend on time zone, regional location. Never planned for this coming week. It's been slated for late June for many many weeks. It's not from a delay. This is just how Nintendo planned it out. VGC has also stated that Pierce's comments match with what it has been told. And I know yesterday when we talked about it, it is like right there with that annual investors meeting, which is an odd time to schedule a big event like that since they could have just done it a week prior, but Nintendo works in mysterious ways, I, I guess, and maybe they wanted to have it, so they will air it and then go into that meeting ready to answer a bunch of questions, or maybe something's getting announced that they figure investors would want to ask a lot of questions about, and they're like, hey, if we air it close to that, well, there's not gonna be a lot of time to start uh, coming up with a bunch of questions. I, a lot of theories right now around this scheduling. Also, there's the possibility that they want to make sure they're as separated as possible from Summer Game Fest. I, maybe, maybe that's a thing. Again, hard to say exactly what Nintendo's plan is here, but it's something they have planned out for a while now. So there you go. For anyone who asks me in, on Twitter or in emails and stuff, look towards the last week in June, which is actually something I joked about a little while ago on Newswave. Next up, let's talk about Sonic Frontier. Specifically though, a response from Sonic Team Head Takashi Lazuka when asked about fans' reaction to the trailer that we have seen so far from IGN first with the combat and the traversal. This was in an interview with VGC, uh, where they say it's not really that surprising. We do realize everyone is just kind of reacting to the videos that they saw, and because they don't understand what this new gameplay is, they're kind of comparing it to other games that they already know. So we do see a lot of people saying, oh, it's kind of like this, it's kind of like that, but it's not like this, it's not like that, and really, the team is going out and creating this new game format for Sonic, and we're calling it an open zone format. They do go on further to say that there are currently no plans to delay Sonic Frontiers based on the reaction, and they also say from our playtesting results, we have been iterating, we have been listening to the comments that come back, but we've also been getting a lot of great feedback from people who rate the game and are like, I had a lot of fun playing this game. I'd give it like an 80 or 90 point score out of 100. Oh, okay, this, this is interesting. First off, they're, they're saying that people are getting the wrong impression of the game from what they are showing people of the game, but like they control what is shown in these videos with IGN. Obviously they're setting it up in like these staggered releases of video footage, but the most interesting footage we have is from people who are getting like these two or three second shots at Summer Games Fest where people were playing the game and they were barring people off from showing the cool parts of the game, probably because it's under contract with IGN and they will be the ones to show it first as the name implies IGN first. So it'd be a shame now that I think about it, if the game was actually really good and it's just their poor marketing and delivery of the game, had it do poorly when it comes to sales, but it's another Sonic game and these Sonic games, they probably sell better than they should based on the quality and obviously the reviews and stuff that they get. And at this point, they're talking about like 80s and 90s when it comes to reviews. I think they should just be aiming to do better than Sonic Force. Just do better than your last outing, which should be pretty easy. I think the overall concept of Sonic Frontiers will score it higher than like a the 55 or 56 or whatever that Sonic Forces got. So that I think it's better to get above that and then continue to work your way up from there. I would like to see Sonic Frontiers in its entirety and I hope they have plans to eventually show it off maybe after IGN first this whole thing is done they just sit down and maybe play the game on a live stream for like half an hour and show us what it really is. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about that Capcom showcase. It took place last night. It was like 35 minutes long and they did tell us what we were gonna see going into this, which were basically just updates on already announced titles and some deep dives showing off different elements in gameplay. Well, we can start at the top here with Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. They showed off different areas, new monsters, some of those from other Monster Hunter games, which is pretty cool. There is a demo that is available right now for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which is kind of funny that there's a demo for the expansion, but it looks like it's gonna be a pretty large chunk of content there. There will also be free updates 
following the expansion's release on June 30th, and that will run into 2023. So a lot of stuff coming there for Monster Hunter fans. They moved on to talk more about Street Fighter VI, just showing off some more gameplay and the characters and a little bit of that kind of that world or that single player you'll be experiencing there. Then they talked about Capcom Fighting Collection that be uh, that coming out June 24th. Then Capcom Arcade Stadium 2 that coming out July 22nd. They talked quite a bit about Exo Primal. This is a squad-based action game where there will be two squads of five. You compete against the other team, but at times there will be very large bosses that appear and you guys kind of work together at points while also competing. It's essentially dinosaur horde mode, and at times it looked kind of like Anthem with dinosaurs. You get experience points as you play through these different skirmishes, and you use that to improve that little exosuit that you're flying around with and everything. They show different classes and variations of it. They will have a closed network test with signups live now, so you can check that out, and it is still slated for 2023. They talked about Dragon's Dogma, which got people pretty excited in the chat during the live stream. Oh, until they found out that this was just an announcement for another event for Dragon's Dogma to celebrate the 10th anniversary. It looks like they'll have a live stream on the 16th, so in a couple of days. And maybe they'll announce Dragon's Dogma 2 there, uh, hard to say. They then started talking about Resident Evil, starting with Resident Evil Village downloadable content. This was a bit more than I was expecting. They have Shadows of Rose that appears like Rose will have her own story to go through there, all in third-person perspective. There'll be new content coming to Mercenaries, and there's also going to be a third-person mode added to Resident Evil Village, which was pretty requested, I would say, by a lot of people. And I'm curious to see how some of those set pieces that were done very well in first-person will play out in this third person mode. And this is slated to go along with the new, newly released Resil Village Gold Edition that will wrap all this DLC together on October 28th. Then we had another look at Resident Evil 4 Remake and I was kinda hoping they would spend more time with this, especially with gameplay and maybe even just play through part of it. Not quite though. I mean, we saw more than we did previously in that state of play and visually, it looks awesome. Like, it looks really, really good. That that RE engine is still extremely impressive. Uh, it does look like it's going to be scarier, going for a darker tone. It seems like they're trying to set a lot of it at nighttime. And they said they're aiming for a, high, a, a more of a sense of loneliness, right? Like, you are by yourself when you're going through this against uh, mounting odds. Still slated, of course, for March 24th, 2023. And then they finished out the presentation with a quick montage of Resident Evil 7 to N3, all of which are getting their next gen versions or current gen now for like the PS5 and the Xbox series, as well as a patch that will follow through to PC. This will include 4K high frame rate modes and ray tracing. Also, they're gonna have 3D audio support, which seems like it would work really well for these style of games. And the free update is available right now free of charge. And overall is about what I was expecting from Capcom because they told us what to expect going into it. I kind of wish we had more of a look at RE4 and if we had to sacrifice some time from Exo Primal, that's fine. But otherwise, having those updates drop immediately for Resident Evil 2, 3, and 7 is great. And the downloadable content for Village looks awesome. So not bad here from Capcom. Nothing like mind-blowingly new or anything there, just updates for games that already look good. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked, have you played Resident Evil 4? Now look at this. 43% said, no, I haven't played RE4. 30% said they played it on the GameCube, so thumbs up there. And then 27% said, yes, but later on when it was ported. I do these polls a lot where I see a game's getting remade and I, I see it. People go, well, why are they remaking that? I don't understand. I run a poll like this and then sometimes half the audience hasn't even played the game. And I've mentioned this before. It's because generations of gamers cycle in and they didn't play games that came out, you know, in 2004, 2005, 2006, even 2013. I mean, that's almost 10 years ago, if you think about it, right? So, and I know RE4 is widely available, but think about what some of the younger gamers are seeing now as they come into games, and the PS4 was their first system. They might look at RE4 and be like, ooh, that, I don't know, that doesn't look that good. Why is everyone really happy with this game? They can do so much more with it. Well, now Capcom is, and they're gonna sell it all over again to a new generation. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here. This is from Huffy saying, it was a good showcase. People just didn't catch the within 12 months tagline. And so they expected Fable and Hellblade, etc. I really enjoyed the show. 
you know, that actually might be a good idea for Microsoft to do next time. If they are going into a showcase and they already know, okay, this is for the next 12 months, they should do that in the tagline when they make the announcement. Similar to what Nintendo does with their Direct, where they say, tune in for a look at games coming up this fall and maybe a look into early parts of next year, right? Again, the next 12 months. I think people were going into the presentation with Microsoft, hoping to see them make a big splash for the end of this year, which they didn't. I like. I was thinking Forza was a lock for 2022, and it ends up being spring 2023. That surprised me quite a bit. And I noticed a lot of people online weren't like blown away by Starfield. In fact, people are making comparisons of Starfield to No Man's Sky. So I just look across the presentation. There were a lot of announcements. There was a lot of variety. And I'm sure there was probably a game for everyone there. But I think people were going into this with E3-sized expectations, and they just weren't really met. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. It was the Nintendo Direct taking place seemingly 28th, 29th. How do you feel about Nintendo doing a fairly late direct for the summer when we normally expect it second week around E3 time. Also, what about that Capcom showcase and PlayStation Plus? Did you get a chance to try out the premium tier with those PS1 games? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.